So if you watch the replay later. So here's the thing. Larry asked about he wants to be able to reduce the volume through a keyboard shortcut and uh, lower it by 5 dB. I put a macro up here, and what it allows you to do is highlight anything you want, and then boom, and now it just went down 5 dB. And I'm, I'll, re I'll create this from scratch so you get to see the re what is how, how that's going to work. And I have to admit, 90% of the time, that's not what I would do, and here's why. I'm going to undo that. So if I have something here, 5 dB might be right, but 3 dB might be better. Or And I visually am going to highlight something. Anything I want here, do a quick double click. That's how you split something into its own event. And then I can drag it down from either the drag handle here or the top line here as well. And the reason I prefer that, and also watch a little tool tip that's there. You can see how much you've brought it down on the right. And if you add the shift key, then you can, you can is it shift, is it control, is it alt, option? Um, and so I don't remember, but point being this, I can drag it. And when I do that, I can see how much I brought it down. But that's, I'm usually, I'm, I'm not trying to take down 5 dB or 7 dB or 16 dB or X dB. What I am is trying to match the visuals of the what's before and what's after. And I'm going to use that. So if I zoom out a little bit here, and you'll see this would be a certain amount. That's minus 15. That's too much. Uh, this is going to be so much, and I'm just going, let me put it down here. So this is going to give me the differential. How much am I bringing it up? How much I'm bringing it up really doesn't matter to me as much as matching what's before and what's after. If I use a uh, shortcut key and I bring it down 5 dB, well, 5 dB may not be enough. 10 dB might be too much, that kind of thing. So I'm going to usually do the drag method because I can just grab this line at the top, drag it up and down, I visually can match it and go, oh, that looks about right, and then play it. And yeah, and, and even in real time, you can adjust it. But somebody sometimes wants to do it with a keyboard shortcut. You could have it take something down by 1 dB. You could have it do more. I mean, that's all very, very, very doable if that's what you wanted to do. So what I'm going to do, though, because the request was, yeah, but I want a keyboard way of doing it or a macro that can do it. That's easy. It's also, there's a 3 dB one built in, but let's create it from scratch. So here's what I would have done. I'll go up to an existing macro toolbar that I have. You probably already have a macro toolbar. You've got something displayed there. Make sure you click on RoboGuy so it's displayed. You go over and create a new group. So you take an existing group, right click on it. And one of the options there, oh, let me make sure. Let's see, I gotta look at my monitor here. Make sure my, yeah, good, good, good. Um, I, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't accidentally covering it up with my video here. So I'm not. So I right click, new group. There's a group. And then if you double, if you click on that, then you can go and create a label here for it. So I, I created one called volume. So volume two. All right. So I have two groups. And then within that, you can add a button. And then when you add a button, you can right click on the button and, and see now it has no name. So this would be a horse with no name. If you're old enough, most of you won't get that reference. But I can call this turn it down. I could call it anything I want. Okay. And then I'll assign it. And I'm going to create a new macro because this is what you're going to need to do. And since you won't know the commands, I'm going to need split. I think it's, uh, let me see what I'm going to need. I think I'm going to need split. And I'll do, let me try that. So, by the way, when you don't know what it is, I mean, first off, you'd have to kind of know these a little bit, and you can search through, and there's hundreds of them, but I know that I want to make a split, and I happen to know that it's going to be uh, split range. So I double-click on that. It puts it over there. Cool. So split range will we'll handle that. And the other thing I'm going to do next is I'm going to say volume. And if you need to, you'll get to rewind this, but it's uh, I'm going to decrease volume. And... You know, there's decreased volume. And by the way, if you double click on it, by all, you know what? That's wrong. See, don't do that. That should be edit volume. Uh, that would give it a set amount. By the way, I don't remember what the amount is. Uh, I think it's 3 dB. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. But remove that. That's not the one I want. I wanted edit volume. Edit volume would allow you to go up or down. You throw that in there and double click on it. And I could say positive numbers or negative numbers. I'm going to say minus five in this particular case relative to wherever it is. Choose OK. Now I have edit volume there. And then this is optional, but I highly recommend it. I'll throw a crossfade in there. And I'm going to say create crossfade, and I'm going to leave it at the default. And now I have the whole macro. So I'm going to say uh, lower or reduce by 5. We'll call it reduce by 5. 
and or it could have been turned down five, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Turn it does matter. It matters that you can find it. You know, turn down five, and then uh, if I have that, I put it in a group, of course, for me, and then I have that whole little macro there called turn down five, three steps, easy. I also can assign it to a keyboard shortcut. So as soon as I turn, ch choose OK, because I call this turn down, so I'm going to go turn down. And then if I go back into the macro organizer and I'm going to search for turn down, there's turn down five. And from right there, I can assign a shortcut key. And I'm going to see what I have on five there. Um, that's not what I wanted. I want to turn down. <laughs> there's turn down five. That's the one we're going to use. And then I'm going to say, I don't know. Let me try a minus key. Do I have a sign? That's, that's macros zoom overview. Yeah, I'm going to leave that one there. I'm going to try to find something. Do I have anything on the period? Okay, I don't have anything on my period key. Now, if you do something, by the way, H is assigned to something already. Half the time, uh, Studio One assigns all sorts of things to all sorts of things. So a lot of times, this is a musical thing. And if you're working voiceover, there are 20 things or, uh, out of the keys that are there for a musical purpose. Then you just have to make a judgment call. Am I ever going to use that? And if I want to, I could put it back later. But I'm going to go ahead and say, no, I'm going to going to steal that. But I happen to know that the period key wasn't being used. So I'm going to put period and then uh, choose a sign. And now for me to turn that down, instead of clicking on turn down five, I'm just going to dot it, uh, period, choose OK. And now the whole thing works. And uh, so now... I take this, I press my shortcut, and it turned it down five. I press this, it turns it down another five. And I can do that many times. Now, you know, like I said, I'm going to visually adjust it so that it looks right. And I found this. Once you've done this a little bit, when you look at it, you can tell. And there are times where three would have been better and seven would have been better because of this one, because of what it's in between, and you might be bridging the gap. So I'm not usually going to use a shortcut key that takes it down but if I did, I probably would do a smaller amount so that I can have little increments. But then I'm going to end up doing that a bunch of times. In this case, I just think visually is an easier thing to do uh, in most cases for this kind of thing, for turn it down. But hey, Studio One gives you the, the flexibility so you can do that if you want to. Give yourself a macro, rewind this, set it up, assign it to a shortcut key like we just did. And then you have a shortcut key that'll do it or you can click on it. And also, by the way, you could have gone through and made this whole macro by going through the macro organizer and if you chose new and never put it on a little button. I put it on buttons, but you don't have to. That's an optional thing. I always put them on, but I don't always. I have some that I have just on shortcut keys, but it's optional whether you have them with a button or not, a uh, shortcut key. So yeah, you could have it without having a button with a button. These both do the same thing. Uh, now you got to see how that was constructed. So first thing, I'm going to go look for, for comments, see if anybody commented on any of that stuff, ask a question. That takes me a second here. I'm going to go over here to my other monitor, and I'm going to look in the background here, and that will be here. And I'm going to go to YouTube and see. I don't see any comments there. So I don't even know if anybody ever saw this. I don't know if it's even working. <laughs> I hope it is. But if not, hey, uh, oh, I do have David put a thumbs up. So I, I assume that that means that uh, somebody saw it and it's actually working. So hopefully that's working there. And I do believe it is working. I'm going to refresh this screen here. Sometimes the screens don't refresh quickly, especially with all the stuff I have going on here. And David, yep. So I, it, it, oh, by the way, if ever I'm doing this live stuff, it really helps if you throw in a little comment on YouTube, if you throw in a comment on especially the live. Uh, and I'm going to now go to YouTube live and see if I can see a comment there. I don't see any comments there, but you guys are always, if something isn't clear, throw a comment in. I will have another one of these later today. I'm going to do another live one. I'll trim off the beginning of this one a little bit later as soon as I can. So if you come back to review this later, you won't have all the garbage at the beginning because I'm working on something where I can be able to broadcast to Facebook Live at the same time as I'm doing YouTube Live. I have to start one and then start the other. I mean, it, it just, it, it, there's some startup time in there. I waste about a minute up front. And uh, I'll get that down to where it's probably half that time after I do this a few times. But it will give access to it. And it's easier to find things, uh, you know, a month or six later on YouTube compared to going back and finding them here. So in Facebook, okay, Facebook makes it harder to search. 
uh, they're doing a better job, but it's still not as easy as YouTube. So check the live section. There's a there's a place that you can see all the live videos in YouTube, and I'll put the I'll put a link in in the Facebook thing so that you can get to it later. But just remember, you go to YouTube, you can search easier and find this uh, under my live videos. All right, I'm going to stop this now unless I see a comment up there. I don't see a comment there, but I thank you, David. Super helpful for you putting the uh, thumbs up because at least I know that somebody's able to see that feed and I should have asked up front. Hey, throw a comment in there. Yeah, I didn't do that. And I'm going to do this again later. I have another one. Uh, Taki asked, I think, uh, how to do something uh, to export a bunch of things all at once easily. And I'll do that one later today as well. So it might be in 15 minutes. It might be in two hours. I don't really know. But it will be soon, and it will be today, and it will be broad, uh, multicast, both to Facebook and to YouTube at the same time. So if you miss it, hey, go watch it on YouTube. Uh, subscribe, like, do all that good stuff. And, of course, we'll see you in the groups. Send me a message if I can assist with something. Talk to you later. Bye.